according to this, we are in fact finally live. But I'll just wait for the chat to confirm that we are live and then I will go into this like it's normal. So, I mean, it depends on what the chat says. It doesn't work. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They are the ultimate judges. Yeah. I mean, it seems like we're working. Can people see? They're out there in the wilderness. I know there's a delay, so it's going to take a while for them to be able to answer. So, you know. Uh, they don't seem to be reacting. Yeah, I'm on the, uh, the stream page right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, nobody, nobody is, uh, yeah, that's a solid point. I should go to the stream page. Well, bearing is in the live stream. Yeah, it says we're late and thus that's gay. So, uh, let's see. Where's my discord at? That, that According to the laws of the internet. Yes. Yeah. I'm just waiting for it to <sighs> kick on. Uh, let's see. Announcement. Let's hit the button. Confirm. Okay, it's just us staring according to the live view. So I'm guessing we are in fact alive. Uh, I, I think so. Okay. Yeah, the chat has changed. So. All right. We're perfect. In. Uh, ignoring Marino. Okay, so greetings and welcome everybody to this wonderful live stream on the internet.com where I am joined by the founder, co-founder, and president of Atheist for Liberty. He is a young man in a suit, and his name is Thomas Sheedy. Thomas, welcome to the channel. I know we tried this yesterday, but hopefully this works much better, and it appears we are working much better. Yeah, I, I was about to say, Sean, thank you for having me, but, but I think glad to be back is yeah. uh definitely something much better yes Tom thomas, so has a, back. <laughs> thomas has a very good behind the scenes look at my technical difficulties face where i'm very much trying to make stuff work that is not working or cooperating in any way but i'm happy that you're here tom and i'm happy to talk, talk about your organization and a little bit about you first and foremost this most important question do you just keep that suit next to you before you go live and put it on really quick or is this a full you know ironing and a whole process i don't know anything about suit maintenance so 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 it is the whole process i go through all the time and energy just to make sure that that this is all good i get these dry cleaned i have three different suits i have a have this nice gray one i got a black and i got a navy blue so so i'm i'm getting ready just for you sean all right just I, for you i appreciate that i appreciate that um so there's a bit of a delay so people are still telling us that we're live but that's not important uh the point is we are in fact working so uh thomas why don't you tell me a little bit about your organization the history what inspired you to found atheists for liberty and what we were trying to get into yesterday uh where you think the atheist movement should go at this point in time So um, I'm the founding president of an organization called Atheists for Liberty. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're dedicated to sustaining individual rights and preserving knowledge and promoting a separation between religion and government. Got my start doing this organization around over a year, well, no, around, let's say two years ago now. Wow, time, time flies really fast. Um, when we started to see what was happening and what remained of the atheist movement. The atheist movement or the new atheism was this massive counterculture that we saw both online and offline throughout the Western world, US, Canada, UK, et cetera, where people were, were coming out of the closet saying that they were atheists or godless people, um, that they wanted to be accepted in society as atheists and that we should promote a more reasonable society or a society without dogma or superstition. Um, it was it was a great movement filled with multi-million dollar organizations, massive YouTubers, including some YouTubers maybe watching now, um, and people that that just had enough with with creationism being taught in public schools, um, Islamism and jihadism rising rampantly. You know, we got our start really after the September 11th attacks. 
here in the United States when, when atheism was really popular. Um, but over the years, I would say from around 2011 to 2016, there was sort of a woke left or far left infiltration of our movement. People right. claiming that there's rampant sexism and rampant racism, rampant homophobia, transphobia, whatever words that they can come up with to say that our movement, which was one of the most welcoming movements out there, um, was filled with hatred and bigotry and that we needed woke feminists to come on into our organizations and fix the problem, fix the systemic issues uh, that we were facing now. And we, we fell for it. There were plenty of good liberals that, that fell for the lies that many woke activists um, told us. And that really resulted in the degradation and ultimate downfall of uh, the atheist movement or the atheist community. And that's why Atheists for Liberty exists now. Well, um, we're trying to rebuild and continue what the new atheists started. Well, the atheist movement was overwhelmingly liberal and more in the classical sense when it started out. So when and classical liberals, if you want yes. to use that term, I feel like it's a little played out, but I'm going to use it anyway for the purpose of this conversation. <laughs> Obviously, they're opposed to racism and sexism and all that. So you feel like the atheist movement with the best of intention invited these people in to come and solve these problems and all that really did was lead to the downfall of that movement, like we've seen with a million other organizations. It was a perfect Trojan horse. Yeah. It was a perfect Trojan horse, Sean. That's what it was. We saw something very nice. We, we thought, oh, well, I'm, Sean, I'm against racism. Are you against racism? Yes, Thomas, I'm against racism. We fell for the, the lie that there was racism within this movement. And when I say we, I just mean the movement. Right. But when this started, I was like 10 or 11. I mean, you you want to <laughs> look. You want to play it, it off, off, Tom. You want to play it off like you're like, oh, when I started, when this started, I was young and all that. But I've heard from a very reliable <laughs> source that may have been your own face saying these words that you, in fact, saved up your allowance to go to the Reason Rally. Can you confirm or deny that this is true? That is actually true. <laughs> I can confirm that. So, so there was there were two reason rallies. There was this there was a successful reason rally in 2012 with 30,000 atheists in the rain. This is before the atheist movement fell. When we were actually talking about atheism, secularism, human rights, individualism, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and free exchange of ideas. Um, and then there was a a really bad reason rally, a second reason rally, which drove only between around between 700 to 2,000 people. Um, and I remember waiting years and years and years to go to the second reason rally. And I was saving up my allowance. I didn't have a job at the time. I was saving up my, my allowance, um, in order to go to this event because I was really looking forward to joining an ever growing movement, um, for reason and for acceptance in the West. When I got there in Washington, uh, the crowd was very tiny and, and overall we ended up getting more people <laughs> near our event. Uh, as tourists in the Lincoln Memorial than actual attendees from the rally. So it ended up not being good. I, I had a little bit of fun. I got to interact with some famous atheists here and there. But overall, I would probably say for, for a lot of people expecting what was once a fantastic event and what was once a healthy and, and fantastic movement, um, it was, can I curse on here, by the way? Am I able to curse? I mean, on this program? Yeah, you, you can yeah. do it. It was a shit show, Sean. It was a shit show. It didn't go well at all. Um, we lo we literally pissed away millions of dollars into the Lincoln Memorial right. because we wanted to look progressive. Yeah, I mean, you know, Abraham Lincoln is, is is a good president. That's a good person to align yourself with, uh, at least yeah. visually. Although it seems like the uh, the well, yeah, I, mean, I think they wanted to recreate the March on Washington. That's what they want to. They want the they wanted the aesthetic. They wanted the look, and they didn't get it. Yeah. They didn't get it because they inst instead of sticking with the overall mission of what new atheism was 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 meant to be in politics they they went with being super feminist and super progressive and super woke they embraced movements that had nothing to do with what we were fighting for and we ultimately lost yeah. new atheism looked like a joke thanks to the woke left yeah and i think they also happened to embrace the new religion of our time the new people and that happens to be the like woke sjw religion like it it's yeah. it's fully equipped with all the trappings of a faith and things that you're fighting against and uh you know you got your original sin which is your white privilege uh you have the fact that you need exactly. to repent at least once you have to admit that you are racist in order to not be racist but you still are racist 
It's it's a total it's a total mess. You can never get out of that. Once they paint you a racist, you can't get out of it. Yeah, you um, just have to accept it and kind of you know, like move on, accept all the parameters and all that, and that's how you end up dealing with the uh, the issue of being a literal actual racist or white supremacist. So I think part of your well, it's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Yeah, go go on. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying I think part of the I think part of the uh, I think part of the issue with the original atheist movement is that you gathered all these people there with one basic principle that they didn't believe in God. But lots of people don't believe in God. That doesn't mean that they have anything in common. Just like your average Christian doesn't have that much in common with another Christian. And I get that there's a difference between atheism and a religion because one is a belief in something, one is not a belief, mm-hmm. but. Uh, the point still fits is that there was no foundational ideology other than this one truth. And then people try to inject an ideology into it. And that happened to be this like left wing cultural Marxism. And that destroyed the movement. And and, and we let it in through through administrative decisions, uh, which which was horrible. So I I do totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, We, we, did also agree on a few other things like a separation between church and state. We wanted to promote more scientific thinking, uh, reasonableness. We wanted to fight back against, you know, Islamism and creationism and a few other things that were unifiers. But you were right. Um, when you align yourself sometimes with with so few principles, right. it's very hard to herd the cats together, right? A lot of people say that getting atheists together is like is as hard as herding cats, um, which which is true. Um, but at least when it comes to our work at Atheists for Liberty, going after our target markets, libertarians, conservatives, classical liberals, good-minded liberals, people in what was known as the intellectual dark web, sane, normal people that care about human rights, about secularism, about various principles such as that. Um, where am I going with this? We, we, we at least have enough to, to unite maybe a little bit more, right. way more, I would actually say, than what – the atheist one was originally set up to do. We want to continue all the great things that the new atheists wanted to accomplish, but without making the same woke mistakes. Because I'm already seeing the consequences right now in the culture war with a lack of secularism, a lack of atheists being in the picture. Because on one end, you have this woke far leftist religion popping up, and now you're starting to have some people say, well, maybe we should go back to having a religious revival, that the only way to fight this new faith is through faith. When in reality, I see, I, I see that argument as the downfall of our side in the culture. War. Right. Because if you look at the statistics, we are becoming a more secular society year by year. Not saying this is an insult to my many of my great religious friends, many religious people that we should work together with in this fight, but this is just a simple fact. Our society is becoming more secular. If you look at data year by year in the United States, in Canada, in Britain, in Belgium, in France, in the West in general, and really across the world, you are seeing religion shrink. You are seeing religious affiliation shrivel up more and more year by year. So we as people who care about religious liberty, who care about the individual, who care about our republic and democracies and human rights, we need to come up with real secular solutions to fix these problems, even if it looks like it's so 2010. Right. Yeah, no, it's important to not give into your principles in order to uh, give up on your principles in order to like bolster your numbers. So I do, I do think it's important. I think the conservative movement has a lot of problems with that. They end up churning over everything they keep giving more and more ground to the left and then they wonder why they feel like they're always losing on everything and there's a great expression it comes from michael malice it essentially makes the case that um conservatism is just progressivism going the speed limit and if you're if you're you don't want your atheist movement to just be some kind of dogmatic movement but going the appropriate speed limit. Like you want to actually stand up for your core principles in order to have a movement. And I think it's important. We want to do that. And especially. I was going to say, I think it's important that you're reaching out to what's traditionally considered the other side on the atheist issue, because Mm -hmm. not being religious is not a partisan issue. And I like that your organization is kind of moving past that idea that it is. 
it shouldn't be a partisan issue. I, I from just judging from experience, I go I go to CPAC every single year. I went there last year. We premiered Atheist for Liberty at CPAC this year. Last year I went to the Turning Point USA Student Action Summit. I've done college Republican events. I, I hang out with a lot of libertarians as well. There are many atheists and agnostics, even within the modern day conservative movement now. Yet simultaneously, optics wise, we in many ways are conceding to the left. Yet simultaneously in the ways that we shouldn't concede, we're sounding like we're, we are in 1980 or 1984. We sound like the old church lady in the corner that's upset that there's a gay pride parade from like 1995, you know, coming on into their main street. They're sounding kooky in all the wrong ways and then conceding in all the wrong ways. And ultimately it, it means we lose in the end. The woke left takes over everything in our society degrades. So if I was in charge of the conservative movement or the liberty movement or the optics of those communities, I would say, let's bring in the largest growing, I guess you could say religious demographic in the country, which are atheists. And people who were in an atheist movement started by people like the late, great Christopher Hitchens, people like Professor Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and Daniel Dennett. You really think they sound like woke leftists anymore? No, they're labeled today by the woke left as racist, as sexist, as as bigoted. Um, we're on the same team here. And I think it's just taken us too long of time for for new atheists and the conservative movement and the liberty movement to really come together to defend civilization as we know it. Do you, do you like the term uh, Christian atheist? Um, that, that's, that's a term that they use to describe atheists <laughs> that uh, for some reason don't I know, understand yeah, the I, I, rule that you're not supposed to talk about Islam. So... Or do I have that wrong? I hate I hate that rule, and that was a problem that we had in the atheist movement for a long time. We were we were absolutely able to bash Christianity, bash Christianity, and critique Christianity, critique the Bible as much as you want. But when it comes to Islam, when it comes to critiquing the religion flown by radical Islamic terrorists who flew planes into the World Trade Center on 9/11 and the Pentagon on 9/11, uh, one of the twin towers, by the way, which my father was supposed to be in, so it definitely has personal consequences could have had personal consequences for me. We're not supposed to talk about that because we might be deemed racist, despite the fact that none of us are advocating for racism in any way. Right. Not myself, not Sam Harris, not any of the four horsemen, not any of the organizers. That just didn't exist within organizations. It's a lie promulgated by far left activists. Well, when you're, it comes you're to being racist uh, against, Christian, against Muslims. Is, is that not a race? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> apparently, apparently, according to uh, the woke left, it is. I'm learning new things from them every single day. But um, addressing your question on Christian atheism, um, I'm a big fan of people such as Douglas Murray. Douglas Murray has started to address himself like that a little bit more. I know a few people who were once in the new atheism call themselves that now. And I know that they're coming at it from a good place, especially because, like them, we're working as well with many uh, good people of faith who, where we happen to disagree on religion itself, but agree on at least protecting secularism or protecting religious liberty. Um, I don't like the term, though, because it, it makes it seem like atheism is a joke, that we shouldn't really be out and proud about being atheists, which I think, think we should. We should still fight the stigma that you can't be a good person, you can't be a patriotic individual without believing in some sort of supernatural entity. And, and, and I say this out of respect to Douglas. I think he is an amazing, intelligent person. And, and many people who do call themselves Christian atheists, I just don't think that is a good strategy. I don't think that's an appropriate term. And I think people get lost in this because it's like, you can draw inspiration from certain religious sources on, on uh, morality questions, but without necessarily yeah. believing in, in that religion like this is the most obvious thing ever absolutely I, true I, I don't get you're, you're totally right and, and well there's been a whole concern brought up that that we as humans need stories we need stories we need biblical stories or we need you know childhood stories to really get us um to understand right from wrong i don't disagree with that religion was created by human beings so we could solve problems that modern day science or modern day politics or culture could not solve. And in many ways, there are still plenty of, of gray areas here that we can't solve. Stories are fantastic. I, as a new atheist, as a militant atheist, I guess, I guess I'd be considered a militant atheist, are in no way advocating for, for the removal of stories. We should 
go back and learn the Bible. We should go back and, and read the Torah and the Quran and various different religious texts over the years. This is part of human history. In no way am I saying we should get rid of acknowledging those parts of our history. Right. But we should push for a more reasonable society. You can do both of that. You know, we have brains. We can we, we can do two of these tests once. So that was a very good point to bring up. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes something being inspired by a religion is not, you know, that's not something I feel like people get the, the old atheist mo movement when it was kind of spinning out of control is where they started obsessing about like very mm. petty things like it says in god we trust on on the money right and i'm like well if if you don't believe in god like that you know maybe that's not the mm. issue to die on a hill on it just doesn't matter that much like i get the point they were trying to de religify public spaces but there was a lot yeah that's what i'm saying there was a lot of time spent on that and it's like we have a bunch of things mm. that are pulled semi-inspired mm. from religion like we have 12 people on the jury be and the idea that that number is 12 is because uh supposedly mm. jesus walked with 12 wise men and so 12 men should decide the fate mm. over somebody that's innocent or guilty and even though that's not a religious mm. policy we can see that it's inspired by that and you can debate whether the number should be 14 or 10 it doesn't you know that that's neither here nor there but we like juries. right now <laughs> yeah but i'm saying we like juries yeah. we like uh, a unanimous verdict to determine somebody's guilt when the state accuses them of something yeah. like i i think you can appreciate where something came from without believing in that and without spending all of your time trying to like fight every single religious battle because there are way, way more important ones yeah. And there's stuff that is literally becoming forbidden to talk about that needs to be addressed. Like the UK, France, and a lot of European countries are establishing essentially blasphemy laws when it comes to Islam. And I think that's a giant problem. And if, you know, compared to like the concern of in God we trust on the US currency. Right. Like by comparison. I, and, this, and this is my problem. They wanted to look so progressive to where when it comes to these civilizational issues, real issues concerning life and death, concerning people's quality of life, many uh, of, of the people in the atheist movement ignored that because they thought it was too conservative looking. Um, when in reality, new atheists were talking about this for years and years. It was the organizers on the ground who said, ew, that's disgusting. Christopher Hitchens talking about that? Yuck, that's racist. Sam Harris, oh, he's such a bigot. He advocates for genocide, which isn't true, by the way. Yeah, no. When it comes to, I, I have a, I have an interesting opinion. I, I agree with you mostly on in God we trust and under God on the most part. We shouldn't have dedicated as much of our time in comparison to, um, you know, the problems that we're seeing in the Islamic world, right? Islamic world kind of coming over and bringing its laws to establish in European countries and hopefully, well, not hopefully, hopefully not the United States and Canada. Um, but I, I am still a secularist. I am still an advocate of church-state separation. I just wish that the atheist movement mapped out its priorities properly, where, yeah, we could still advocate for under God maybe being removed from the pledge and being reverted to its, its original form, taking in God we trust off the money, because it, it was off the money before the 50s. Um, that's why I'm a big supporter of uh, organizations like the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which which really tackle those cases. And we, we might get even dabble into some of those cases in the future when we have more resources. But we have to map things out better. We should have stated our priorities from the start that we want to save civilization. That's why the new atheism erupted. It erupted after the September 11th attacks. And and somehow we forget this all the time. We forget that that the new atheists really sounded like the conservative movement of today, we want to save civilization from people that put feelings over facts. We are in the same exact camp. We want to make sure that in future cases, planes don't fly into buildings. We want to make sure in future cases that religious liberty is free for all. We don't want gay people hanging from cranes. We don't want women being stoned. Basic things where our culture and our society, our secular society is much better. And I don't think we should follow any trend that says that we should go for a more dogmatic society or step back because it's too bigoted um we should go with our gut and we should go with our principles here yeah no. and that's something that we faced. i'm not saying that you drop those issues that you care about i'm just saying mm -hmm. like you rank them in terms of their importance and in terms of the damage yeah. that they'll cause like i i i'm a huge believer in separation of church and state and i think one of the things that a lot of religious people forget 
is that the separation of church and state is not only good for the state, but it's good for the church. A lot of European countries that don't have that separation are far less religious than the United States of America. So it's exactly, a, it's which, a, which is kind of funny. If you think about it. Countries like Sweden, countries like Germany, countries like France that technically have state religions on the books, they are more secular and more atheistic in comparison to the United States. Not saying that's a bad thing, but um, when it comes to more increased religious demographics, you want a separation between religion and state. You want the state to not interfere in the dealings of the church. And you don't want a different church or a mosque or a temple dealing with the affair, getting involved in the affairs of the state that could affect your religious institution. Again, for your viewers, especially people that have been involved in this stuff for a few years, the anti-SJW people, a lot of us, we come from that atheist movement. I know it sounds like it's so 2010 or 2013, but it is really important here because right now we're seeing a rise in two political extremes. On one end, you're seeing the far left. They've taken over the atheist movement. They've taken, they're taking over politics in Congress. They've taken over every single movement and award shows, everything that you can think of. And then on the other end, because we have diverted so much against reason now, reason that's so old now, it's so 2010, and we've gone so far into wanting responsibility. And I say this as a Jordan Peterson fan. I love Professor Peterson, everything he does. And we, I think people really do need to find a place in life and a purpose because there are people that have gone so far off the other deep end. You're seeing a rise in a, in a really far right movement. It's not growing as fast as the left, but you're seeing a rise in a, in a far right movement that cares about the divine right of kings over the Constitution. That's really scary. That's what happens when you focus more on Judeo-Christianity or stating that stuff and not acknowledging secularism. And that's something that we, as anti-social justice activists, as people who care about the Enlightenment, as people in the conservative movement, in the libertarian movement, should care about. We need to mention secularism more. Right. And it'll ultimately make our movement stronger, more people will come to us, and it'll better, far, better our culture entirely. And that's why that's one of the big reasons why Atheist for Liberty as an organization exists. We're doing what we can every single day to grow, to get involved in the various movements and demographics that we're, that we're going into. And we're trying to build a good amount of community, of at least the same positives that the new atheist movement did years ago. Right. Yeah, I think coalition new, building new positives that people had. Yeah. God, it's, it's, it's literally, I'm adjusting my schedule here. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think uh, ha having a broad coalition or focusing on coalition building is very important. Um, I I think moving on from your basic, uh, you know, the basic like there 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 is no God, and then like like I remember right. um, a, a a mutual person that we know, Devin. Um, he get he would get comments occasionally that's like, why don't you talk about atheism anymore? And he was he would just reply, he's like, there is no God. What else do you want? Right. Like, right. like it is we important need to dive further. We need to dive further into that conversation and not just say, all right, there's no God. That's why we're atheists. Yeah. We need to focus more on the civilizational aspect. Yeah. There's... And the atheists missed a lot of that because they didn't want to be conservative. Yeah. And and we're we're beyond the point where you can just, you know, respond to a creationist on YouTube. They're not on YouTube getting millions upon millions of views on creationist videos anymore like that's not the thing that right. like you have to you have to be able to adapt i mean you would think atheists believe in evolution like you have to be able to adapt to the circumstances on the ground and you have to be able to respond to the exactly. problems and the idea that um all i remember after september 11th well i don't remember but looking back in the history after september 11th all these major figures wrote their books about religion like the four horsemen of atheism not that they weren't around before but they really started to gain more attention right. after 9 11 and the idea that we can't talk about islam or that atheists can't talk about islam period otherwise that they're they're racist is so contradictory to what built up this mm -hmm. movement in the first place and of course to the idea of atheism because atheism doesn't mean anti-christian it means non-belief in religion and that's all of the religions yeah. and it's just this one that's off limits like scientology attack this it one now that's taboo. that's racist. how how dare you sean you're coming from a place of white western privilege how dare you contradict that faith um that was used by extremists or radical islamic terrorists um, to kill over 3,000 Americans. Yeah. 
that is used all the time to go after innocent Europeans. We can't talk about that as advocates for uh, liberal advocates, you could say, for women's rights, for gay rights, for um, for for freedom of speech, for freedom of expression, for religious diversity. Apparently, we can't talk about the the elephant in the room here. That's it's it's ridiculous. And and honestly, if I, I were a progressive or if I were a social justice activist, I would have worded my language very, very differently because their actions triggered people like myself, people like you, people like I, I, I saw Bering watching earlier um, to to have really huge channels for, for organizations to exist, for the conservative movement to explode. You want to you want to stop those anti SGWs, those evil bigots like Thomas and Sean, maybe word your language a little bit differently. Maybe don't sound so pathetic where we can't criticize a, a, a way of thinking that is so dogmatically bigoted, so backwards, that it, it, makes, <laughs> it makes evangelical Christians look like they're in modern times when it comes to certain policies. They did this to themselves. Right. The woke left killed the atheist movement, and now they're about to kill society, and we have to band together to defend society and not let division destroy us in the process. And by the way, they're still they're still at it. They're still attacking Sam Harris. It's not just Ben Affleck on Bill Maher. Yeah. Like uh, I saw. Yeah, it's not like it's twenty fourteen. Yeah, I, I saw a clip of uh, of Jank of Jank Uger, who's a favorite here on this channel and a favorite in my audience. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. T- talking to Arian Foster, and he randomly brings up that there's so much racism in the atheist movement. And specifically, the guy who started atheist racism is Sam Harris, according to Cenk Uger. So it's... it's Oh, yeah, Sam Harris. Yeah. Yeah, but that was recently. He interviewed Arian Foster within the last two right. and a half weeks. So, mm-hmm. like, it's still an uphill battle against this ideology. Now, before we continue, I just want to point out Thomas Sheedy, president and founder of Atheist for Liberty. All his links are in the description. I definitely recommend you check him out. Follow him on his personal Twitter, his his professional stuff, all of that. Become a member if you're interested in that. But yeah, yeah. So so, so definitely check that out. I want to throw that in there in the middle of this. All his links in the show me more. Go, 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 go. But uh, yeah, back to the point. <laughs> that plug is uh, hopefully doesn't mm. ruin the momentum. But yeah, yeah. The, um, Jenk is on that this week. Like they're still harping on that. So it might feel like we're going over old territory but this is still the stuff used to kind of kowtow or, or like force people into compliance. It, and it's still here. It's totally true. It's totally true. People in the culture war need to understand that uh, uh, Peter Bogosian, who's one of our AF, atheist liberty advisors, Dr. Peter Bogosian, great guy, he called our current fight against the woke left culture war 2.0. Okay, if this is Culture War 2.0 then, then what was Culture War 1.0? Well, Culture War 1.0 was the new atheism. It was the fight against creationism and talking about Islam and talking about all these things. And the woke left has not stopped talking about us. So we should not stop talking about the issues in Culture War 1.0 if Culture War 1.0 is still relevant. We should bring many of those still important conversations from the previous conflict and talk about them here. It'll help bolster our numbers. It'll bring atheists into our ranks. This is exactly what needs to happen. So thank you, Cenk, for again <laughs> being so silly to not really check your language and call Sam Harris an extremist. You're you're giving more atheists to the conservative movement. You're giving more atheists like myself to the liberty movement. The the founder Congratulations. The founder of atheist racism, Sam Harris, according to Cenk. Again. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous. And you mentioned an organization, um, it, I forgot what it was called, uh, they, but uh, it was earlier in here. It's it's one of these atheist organizations, and uh, they actually gave Cenk Uger an award. Oh, the Freedom from Religion Foundation? Yeah, yeah. The Freedom so, from Religion Foundation? Yeah, they, yeah, I think I believe they gave Cenk an award at some point, so uh, they got a they little questionable history, too. <laughs> but... Uh, they yeah. gave me an award, too. Back in, uh, back in 2015, I was their student of the year. Oh, look at you. Always always up there. Makes sense. Yeah. You're, you're a real go-getter, they still, Tom. They still do great work. Yeah, thank you. They, yeah, they still, FFRF still does good work. Um, in my personal opinion, respect to Dan and Annie Laurie. I really like them. 
Um, I think they have dipped a little bit into woke territory and political territory that doesn't really relate to the mission. I think they'd get a lot more people on their side, a lot more atheists on the right, a lot more moderate atheists too, a lot more liberal atheists that aren't really progressive or woke um, if they tone down the outside politics a bit. But they still do some fantastic work in, in, in defending the Establishment Clause. But yeah, I, I was an awardee too from them in 2015. Back then, the movement was really unified. Um, there was, you know, the whole concern of atheism plus, but really up until 2016, they didn't, they weren't at the peak of their power. You could still be a libertarian or even, even somewhat a conservative and be in the new atheist movement without being thrown out because a lot of us were still in control. We wanted the atheist movement to remain non-political or at least non-partisan. And there were, I remember this. Back in, you know, looking back in 2009 and 2008, looking at old recordings and videos from, from conferences and, and, and awards, the atheist movement used to have conservatives, Marxists working together. That's something you'll never see now. <laughs> Not saying that, that uh, I respect uh, Marxism or, 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 the, or many of the things within, within leftism, but that's, that's the unity that we used to have. You know, you'd have Schenck getting an award and you'd have Sam Harris getting an award at the same convention. That's how things used to be. But it wasn't us, Sean, that were the ones that, that politicized and, and removed people and divided people from the atheist movement and ostracized people. It was the woke left. Yeah. It was the atheism plus crowd. They were the ones that did it. I am more than willing to this day to work with progressive atheists. If they sent me an email saying, we agree on this one issue, we might disagree with you on a bunch of other issues, Thomas, but we want to work with you on this one particular objective. Would, will you support us? I'd be the first one to say yes. The first one. Right. They were the ones who made the move to kick us out. They were the ones that destroyed the atheist movement, not us. Well, yeah. We're the good guys. Well, that's, we didn't do anything wrong. Well, that's, we stayed on mission. Yeah, that's their strategy is they infiltrate your organization. They take it over. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they, they're basically uh, the, the modern-day uh, witch trial people because they accuse you of whatever their mm -hmm. – variety of witchcraft is racism sexism homophobia song and they've done it to so many other yeah and that's they've done it to you know sam harris they've done it to michael Shermer. people probably peter Prigozhin. i've run david silverman they've done it to so many people in the new atheist movement people that were, 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 were more open-minded than most people yeah i would argue um you know they're going after david silverman and michael Shermer, some of the nicest people ever you know just imagine 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 you know who else they're targeting they they took everything over and and that's why atheist for liberty exists there's you know i i don't like to create new organizations or start up a, you know a new tent when a sturdy tent already exists the problem is the tent wasn't sturdy it collapsed it got ruined by extremists who wanted to inject their nonsense their bull crap so into a stable a once stable and thriving community Right. So what makes you think that, uh, so what made you, uh, like, what made you think that the old atheist movement wasn't worth saving and that you needed to start your own ex organization? I know you just said, like, there's no need to create a new tent if the old tent's fine, but obviously it was falling down. Mm -hmm. So, like, what was the breaking point right. with you and progressive atheism or atheism that was slowly being taken over by the progressives yeah atheism that presented itself as nonpartisan but became more progressive as time went along well after the 2016 reason rally i began making numerous threads to atheist movement officials employees local state national organizers people in the ex-muslim community about what we should do moving forward after reason rally too Nobody had a clear answer. I went to national conventions, spoke to people who get really good salaries. I asked every single person I could think of. I asked Daniel Dennett even. I don't think, I don't know if he remembers, you know, what, what should we do moving forward? No one had a clear answer. And I tried to do whatever I could. Michael Sherlock, the, the executive director of Atheist Alliance International, really good guy. He's also been going through this recently. He's a few years behind myself. Um, I kept asking people, let, let's stick together. Let's not divide ourselves. Let's not throw people out for simple political differences. Let's not go after people just because they're libertarians or Republicans. Let's be able to criticize the Islamic religion just like we can criticize the Christian religion and still get along with people of faith. Let's do what we can to really keep the glue that was once, you know, a strong new atheist movement together. And I've gotten crickets, Sean. Right. You know, these people don't want to compromise. They don't want a strong movement. They want 
their progressivism and their woke religion to win more than anything else. So we had no choice. Myself and our board chair, Michael Trollin, he's the former president of the Secular Coalition for America, actually, um, and numerous other people who've been in the New Atheist Movement for years, a lot of us came together and we said we need to continue what the New Atheist started for the sake of saving our civilization while showing in good faith, I guess, that we didn't really want to do this. Yeah. We, we wanted the, the existing organizations and the existing structures and at least what remains of the movement, the ghost of its former self, to continue to thrive. And they're not thriving now. They're intentionally shooting themselves in the foot in the name of ideology, casting out people they don't like as racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, Islamophobic, and really um, diverting all of our progress that we've made in the past 10 to 15 years back to zero. People say, oh, atheism won, atheism won now. Well, when you have the leftist religion thriving and in the extremes of the far right, we're talking about divine right of kings now, you really need to ask, we really need to ask ourselves, did atheism really win? I think we have to restart the, the atheist movement. Right. Well, we I, have to bring atheism back. We need secular to go back into the conversation here. And we need to work with movements that are willing to have us. I, like the conservative movement, actually. Yeah. A movement that's actually been quite accepting of us well, cons- to defend our values. Well, conservatives are usually... Uh, conservatives are, are weirdly, even though tolerance is a virtue of the left, uh, I found them to be more accepting on average... Mm-hmm. Like, you go to events like CPAC, you go to events like any kind of conservative event, and they're way more willing to have opposing viewpoints on. Like, the oh, inter- yeah. the ins- like the uh, Fox News will host a Democratic primary, like, debate or whatever. It's the Democrats that don't want to go on Fox News. In fact, Bernie... Meanwhile, NBC... Exactly. And, like, the Republicans, they'll go on NBC's any network. NBC's being attacked right now. For doing a Trump town hall? They'll go on any network. And I don't know if you're paying attention to this. NBC has been getting attacked, Sean, for hosting a, for, for daring to host a President Donald J. Trump town hall yeah. on the same exact night that another network is premiering a Joe Biden town hall. That's blasphemy. How dare a supposedly neutral um, network showcase the president of the United yeah. States in a town hall during an election year? Well, the, it's the same exact thing. I, I have noticed the same exact thing. I've been to CPAC. They have been very accepting and open-minded. And what I'm hoping is that they can, more of them can begin to realize that the new atheists should have been their allies from the beginning, right. not their enemies. We have very, very similar goals, but because of, I don't know, so because, the, because conservatism, you could maybe argue in the early 2000s and even into the early 2010s, maybe wasn't ready um, at the time they didn't they didn't work with us but now things are changing Think things are shifting and well, they have to shift and we have to do what we can to, to align with people who share our values well what do you think about the uh what do you think about the idea that um uh, what do you think about the idea that we didn't have a second debate this this is what i wanted to get to and i want to get your thoughts on the election after that but first uh the presidential debate commission deemed without talking to any medical experts that Donald Trump was not healthy enough for a debate or that it was too big of a risk for the debate, whatever, whatever they justification they used. And they were like concoct. Yeah. They said that it was, it had to be a zoom debate, uh, which the president said no. And I'm glad that he said no. I mean, just look at the technical difficulties we had yesterday. And that was the date that the zoom debate was going to be. And then the Trump campaign responded by saying, okay, Let's make the third debate the second debate because then I'll have an extra week of being clear. And the week after, let's make that the third debate. And the Biden campaign said, no, that's going to be October 29th. That will be way too close to the election. So, like, what are your thoughts about this whole fiasco? Because, you know, I had been... I I think it's... I had been very clear Um, in my prediction that we would have the debates. mm -hmm. And uh, obviously I didn't see Trump getting COVID, which is kind of dumb because... You know he is an old man and he is hanging out doing events but uh what do you think about like this situation and then i'll ask you about your thoughts on this election i think it's horrible that our traditions in hosting the debates have been completely altered i remember just seeing the beginnings of this alteration i grew up on long island by the way long island new york and i remember during every single presidential election cycle hofstra university on long island would be the first university to host the uh, presidential debates. It was a great, fond tradition. I remember the highways getting clogged up 
just because people were so excited to see the two candidates debating that it happened in 2012, it happened in 2016 as well. Um, now Hofstra canceled it because of, I'm assuming, and I could be totally wrong, fact checkers, um, because of COVID, because of the pandemic. Uh, I think they chose to not host the first debate. And now again, yeah, you're seeing you're seeing um, Vice President Biden cancel out. I think I I, I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, there was some influence from from the campaign there on, on wanting to change the format of debates because I watched the first debate. President Trump was on the attack. And whether you agree or disagree with the president, I think he, he was uh, good at, le at at least bringing up a genuine concern about Joe Biden's fitness right. um, to be president. And by the way, this is my personal opinion. I don't even uh, this is my personal opinion, not on behalf of the organization. I don't even have anything against Joe Biden. I'm not actually that partisan. I overall think he's a good man who is patriotic, who loves the country. This is my personal opinion, though. I think that the left is using Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is a good, patriotic man who is being propped up as, as the, the uh, good old Joe, the, you know, the good man that moderates can look up to. When in reality, the moment I think President Biden assumes office, if he wins the November election, the woke people will be in power. People think that I, I've, been, I've been seeing numerous comments, even from friends of mine, saying that Biden is going to be the moderate, that wokeness is going to go away as soon as Joe Biden takes office. Because somehow the wokeness only started under Trump. Well, if you look at Atheism Plus and the wokeness that started to happen in our community, which was really the first communities that, that this ideology started to creep into, it started in 2011 for us. Right. Elevator Gate happened in 2011. Numerous other communities, the Bill Maher Ben Affleck debate, right? That's another big point when it comes to the religion, Islam, woke discussion that happened in 2014. Who was president at that time? President Barack Obama. So the idea that I'll be nonpartisan on this topic, that Obama or or Trump or Biden is going to stop wokeness immediately, no matter who gets into office, is a joke. And I think the left is at play here, especially when it comes to the debates, in ensuring that their good old Joe gets into office without a hassle, without any other disputes. And again, I'm not I'm saying this to someone who doesn't have a problem with Joe Biden. I think he's a good guy and I, who I happen to have some policy disagreements with. Right. Well, so, yeah, that's my opinion. It's a real shame. Yeah, it's I, I don't think Joe Biden will make um, I don't think Joe Biden himself will make is is necessarily the most woke candidate or whatever but he's definitely willing to pander to those people in order to get elected and yep. i think one of the big problems that people don't realize is that a lot of this woke stuff goes back even before you know the obama administration it was just festering in academia and then students learn it year after year mm -hmm. and what we're seeing right now is what happens when those adults are in the workforce inside of all these companies with the new generation of woke crazy people first entering the workforce yeah. but that's why we're, we're getting all this like these these professors that we hear of that are writing you know books about like white fragility and all that like they've been professors at their universities for decades yeah, they, yeah. They, they've been doing crappy research for years and there's been incidents and, and, with... and that's what we used to think of it though crappy research yeah we used to like oh it's that you know even even probably for many professors right probably in the 90s and 2000s probably a lot of normal or maybe liberal professors probably saw many of these ideas as oh that's the crazy stuff going on in the gender studies department right. that's the nutty stuff you know that that our colleagues are working on let's let's get on with our day and teach people about like woodrow wilson or something like that um <laughs> you know but but now it's inescapable. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up my undergraduate degree. Okay, I know what it's like to be on a modern day university campus and not even a, pub, a, a private campus like Yale, which is able to enact a, a, any policies they want when it comes to the stuff without regulation. No, I go to a SUNY institution, SUNY meaning State University of New York. Right. And even throughout SUNY, and even now it's starting in the community colleges, this ideology is creeping into every single sector, every single yeah. sector. One, one and of, we, the atheists, we were the first to see this problem occur. One of one of the uh, more surprising things that I remember from college uh, is that I would be attending, and this was before. I mean, I was interested in politics for a long time, but this was before I was really mm -hmm. in this like kind of space on the internet. But one of right. the things that I would notice is that I would take like a criminal justice statistics class, 
and as a requirement for my degree i'd have uh you know some kind of it feminist class like gender studies whatever you want to call it and i would take them back to back so we would go over crime statistics related to sexual assault and in my criminal justice class we would look up the bureau of justice statistics we would find the national crime victimization survey which is the best survey for capturing those kind of reports whether they're reported to the police or not reported because it's a survey collected independently mm -hmm. from law enforcement and we would get a number for like assaults in different categories right and if you worked out the numbers by that you would get something like for college age girls it's actually way it's actually much safer statistically significantly safer for them to be in a university rather than be a girl the same age not in college right then i would go to my gender exactly. studies class huh <laughs> i was i was about to just intertwine you, you can continue your story if you want yeah but then i would go to the gender gender studies class and we would talk about like sexual assault on college mm -hmm. campuses and we would get like a one yeah. in five a one in four number like some insanely crazy number that's just not borne out by the statistics and it would always be based on some shitty survey with a terrible response rate and you know occasionally i'd be like you know i'm in a criminal justice school like i take criminal justice classes you know we have the correct data set to look at for this and it would just not be tolerated in that classroom like if you brought that up if you said the correct answer yeah. which was the wrong answer in that classroom then you would be punished for it you would be scolded for it and then i go you know i watch tv and i see barack obama president of the united states enacting policies not based on the numbers that his own department of justice fbi collect that this national victimization survey collects but based on the bullshit feminist research so like there like yeah. there's a huge problem and it creeps out through all of our institutions and for some reason uh the gender studies and like you know i'll throw in the black studies whatever they call it african-american studies whatever stupid name they have for it none of these are subjected to any type of academic scrutiny it's just feelings no they're not because non the academics now want that to be seen as fact yeah my my university i i don't know if it's tonight or if it's tomorrow or sometime later in the week they're hosting an official forum this is a state school a random state school in upstate new york is hosting an official forum for the 1619 project yeah this is this is this is real stuff they 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 know a lot of these people, especially the ones that are not in the gender studies courses, they know that there's nuance. They have a lot of them, especially in political science departments, have to, and criminal justice. They have to teach nuance, but they don't care now. Just imagine taking a criminal justice class today, Sean. I don't think you'd be able to survive. I'm, not, I'm surprised that I've survived now. I'm, I'm sort of a super senior, finishing up on credits now. I want to get out. I want to get out because I find it to be a pain for me to spend my entire career now fighting against the very things that I'm now learning to be as fact on a college campus. It just makes no sense. I'm, I'm, I'm getting so done with it. But you're absolutely right, too, when it comes to um, sexual assault on college campuses, right, or the rampant sexual assault, the rape culture on college campuses. Okay, the one in four, one in five statistic is totally not true. I suggest as well, I, I, I would assume you would recommend this source, too. If you look, go to the American Enterprise Institute, Christina, Christina Hoff Summers, who's the factual feminist, she's been giving a lot of data for quite a few years now in the current culture war about the real stats on um, sexual assault and sexual violence. And of course, we should take sexual assault and sexual violence seriously. But the problem is, is just like with the rampant racism and sexism and the atheist movement argument, it's like the boy who cried wolf. When you cry the term sexist or rape or racist so much when those problems are just not there, when an actual instance of assault occurs, it, it eventually there'll be plenty of good faith people who just not saying won't believe, but it'll be, it'll be harder to just get people involved in taking sexual assault seriously. And that's a, that's a real problem. I, I, and I've, I've been to two um, higher institutions of higher education so far. Everywhere I go, there are cops, there are paid, there's paid security. The university police department is pretty well funded. Or I, I, don't, I don't know about my, my, the specifics of what my campus police would say, but it looks pretty well funded. There are these, I don't know if you've been to a college campus recently, there's these like long uh, uh, yellow or blue communications poles where you press the button and like police will be there within like two minutes time. 
that's that's just a fact on every single college campus, community college, private, public, you name it. College campuses are some of the safest places for people, for women. And the idea that we live in a in a rampant culture of rape where where it's you know uh, abductions and rape everywhere that's just not true. It's a lie. Yeah, well, it's an absolute lie. But we are promulgating up this religion just like the problem we saw in the atheist movement, people promulgating up and not talking about Islam and having apologetics for this kind of gender culture too, even within our own atheist ranks, because they want to look progressive, because they always want to be the accepting ones at the top at the end of the day. Well, just being at the top of that hill at the end of the day doesn't always benefit society. It isn't the best progressive thing right. all the time. And you probably get frustrated more than anybody else being a well-versed individual and criminal justice oh yeah the physical problems that we face today in the country well the fact we have can't we have a bunch of absurd stuff and this is like some of the problems with biden that go beyond you know your your basic democrat or republican blah 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 is that that Mm -hmm. progressive like streak to abandon due process when it comes to certain kinds of crimes like we don't have to speculate whether or not joe biden is a believer in that uh, those policies were mm-hmm. implemented under the Obama administration, and Joe Biden has promised to restore them. This idea that you're guilty until yeah. proven innocent if you're accused, and that the school will do its own kangaroo court faux trial where you're not allowed to defend yourself, and you have to, but you're not allowed to question the accuser and provide an adequate defense for yourself, but you are guilty until proven innocent. Like, so there are some absurd consequences yeah. based on that, this. That's really not. Um, um, it's incredibly absurd and I, i'll say this to all the to all the fathers watching this stream say good luck to your sons then when you send them off to college because that's what it's like i've heard numerous uh, numerous studies and numerous instances at universities like columbia like myu like like a lot of famous institutions of, of these kangaroo court situations happening for innocent boys i went to high school i don't really like I, i'm not trying to bring up uh you know, any any dirt on anybody, I, for anybody locally watching me, I uh, hope you know that. Um, there was a really huge story that, that came up in 2017. I went to high school with this one girl named Nikki Uvino, and she was a student from my local high school who ended up going to Sacred Heart University in the fall of 2016. Sometime, I believe, during her freshman year, the first half of her freshman year, she went to some parties or some altercation happened where she ended up accusing either one or two boys of sexual assault, of rape. And their careers at the university ended up getting destroyed. And later on, Nikki Ovino admitted in court, I think an hour or a few hours in, that um, the accusations against those men were false. And she ended up getting into a a little bit of trouble for that. Um, But even with the accusations now being proven on a legal level, with paper, with documentations, with news appearances, to be false for those boys, a lot of them have still lost many friends. A lot of them have still lost many connections and many good career opportunities, thanks to a simple accusation like that. Someone could tell you or me, or it could say something about you or me tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, Sean, saying that we've engaged in some sort of sexual uh, misconduct. And and at least if we were to let progressive activists dictate our future, woke or regressive maybe, activists dictate our future, um, we'd be done. Our careers would be over. Luckily, (laughs) the people who I work with uh, with the people I work with, I don't have to worry about that because we actually care about due process and evidence. Right. And I know you do, too. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not in college anymore, so I don't have to like tread as lightly as one would. And I was never like the leader of any organization when I was in university. Mm-hmm. I was like, get in, get out, uh, maybe meet some people along the way. But I'm not I wasn't that focused on like the inner workings of the college. I, re- I remember people started explaining like the politics of student government to me and i like tuned out walked away and go and went and grabbed lunch never thought (laughs) about it again because it's 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 just not that's just not for me like i I, i'm interested in politics in you know in my real life but even then like that's not the number one thing i want to talk about for like the rest of my life in my personal time and all of that like i don't have the uh the devotion to the cause that you have mr I'm a found an organization, save up my allowance to go see these people. Uh, I'm I got my little scarlet letter pin right there. Like, you know, you're 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 a, you're a different breed, Thomas. And uh, and I do appreciate Thank it you. because they need they, they need people like you that 
are actually going to fight for a cause and fight within a movement, not just abandon a movement when things go sour. Like, I have a lot of respect, even though I'm not a religious person and I'm definitely not a Catholic, for people who stay within mm -hmm. the Catholic Church to fight to make it better rather than abandon it with a scandal. Yeah. And I, by the way, if people... Sovereign get... Nation is a great organization doing that right now. They're, they're actually... Sovereign Nation is a group of Christians who have actually seen wokeness out infiltrate the Baptist community. And what they're doing is they're actually teaming up with us atheists who have gone through the same problem within our movement to combat uh, wokeness within within their uh, community. It's led by a great guy named Michael O'Fallon. You know, uh, he, he's a fantastic person. Look up Sovereign Nations for any for any Christians watching the show that maybe not might not be convinced with my edgy atheist arguments. Uh, you know, we're still friends here, and we we work with people. Uh, you know, on on common issues despite our differences. So Sovereign Nations has been going through the same problem, and yeah, it's now infiltrated Christianity. <laughs> it's infiltrated everything. It, it, wokeness touches. It, it's like a what was what was the was this a Greek myth? The, the goddess or, or someone who would who would touch something and it would turn into stone. Um, oh, I, I forget oh, the, no, exact, no. My, the exact uh, Midas, exact. I got you. Midas would touch something and that would turn it into gold. That's the yes. Midas touch. But That's Med what wokeness is. Wokeness is Midas. But, just IRL. <laughs> but Medusa would look at something and turn it into stone if you made eye contact. Oh, Medusa. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, okay, Medusa or Midas, whatever. whatever I mean, you, whatever, if, uh, if you've seen, blows, if, oh, you, it's if you've seen some of these feminists, I definitely think Medusa fits. Not saying anything, but I just said it. So, isn't Medusa supposed to be beautiful? Isn't Medusa supposed to be good looking? No, she got. With this... a lot of these woke feminists, I don't think they're really uh, so good looking, Sean. She got the. No, uh, she there, got... Are some, there are some. No, she got the unnatural well, well, snake okay, hair. She that's where, that's where she might get along with them and agree with them. Yeah. But Medusa's supposed to be attractive. Um, no, no, no. A lot no, of these no, woke no. feminists... Listen, listen, listen. The sirens. The sirens are attractive. They sing their siren song, and that lures you in. Medusa got snakes in her hair. It's it's all kinds of messed up. And she's very, mm. very self-conscious, like reptile-like skin. I've seen some hot Medusas, I'm not going to lie. I might know what you you've been looking at on the internet. <laughs> based on what you're saying, but I'm pretty sure Medusa's not meant to be right. uh, super attractive. Like, you know. And this is what my night is turned into, folks. Yeah. Hearing about uh, how, how how ugly Medusa's hair is. I thought it was beautiful. Well, I was going with the hair thing because, like, feminists, like, you know, the, they, they always, in order to be different and anti-establishment, <laughs> they all dye their hair the same exact color and wear <laughs> the same thing and pierce their face a million times the same exact way because that's how you know they're different and unique and individuals. So, um, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I was more referencing along that line. But, yeah, uh, I I, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to transition out of this. But um... Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> by the way, this is kind of a I, – I, we've kind of been kind of more formal in the stream. But I know with a lot of your streams, they're meant to be hangouts, you know, us just chilling out more. Yeah. Um, but maybe that, that was a good way to break the ice, talking about how lovely – how lovely uh, feminists look. Yeah. Um, that, 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 <laughs> I bet your audience would really agree with that. Yeah. Oh, no, no downvotes there. No disagreement there. No, no. Look, look. There are some attractive feminists. They just don't get internet famous. Like, there I, are. I, I don't want to cut them. I don't want to cut them that deeply. But, like, you know, the ones that get famous have the hair, have the facial piercings, have the issues with their physical They have the appearance. big red aesthetic. Yes, yes, that that's what that's what catches on, and they're they're so identifiable because it's a uniform. But there are plenty of what I like to call uh, daywalker feminists that look like normal, attractive girls, but also believe all that crazy SJW stuff, and I think that's a problem, and we need to fix that. It's like a burqa, but for Western women. <laughs> we need to figure out a way to uh, to get their <laughs> hair dyed. Maybe offer free blue or bright red like an inhuman red uh hair dye to women and see who takes it up and that's how we'll know who to avoid because you know you run an organization you got to avoid and, these crazy and we'll, have, we'll, have the government pay we'll have the government pay for it so so it, it'll automatically be something that you know free feminist hair dye i think they jump right on board well, we, but I'm saying you, you do have to watch out for that. You have to watch out for infiltrators. You're, you're running an organization. You're a young guy. Uh, you're a nice yeah. looking guy, not just in oh, a suit. I've, I've seen. I've had photos. to deal with infiltrators for years. So. Yeah. 
So, I mean, so how do you, since you're, like, you know, yeah. the president of this organization, so you're the face of it, and already you're doing questionable job associating with sketchy mm-hmm. figures like me, how do you, Thomas, the person who has to be the face of this organization, how do you, like, live up to that responsibility? Because <laughs> there's a little bit more on the line for somebody like you if you end up getting into a scandal. I know you say your organization, you know, is about due process and all that, but if you get hit hard with something and your name gets tarnished by extension, the organization that you represent is right. also going to get tarnished. So I'm asking, it like, could be negatively impacted. Yeah, yeah, because like you're you're absolutely right. Um, I, I I wake up knowing that this is the career path that I've wanted to go on for many many years. I wake up, I have a to do list of every AFL activity that needs to be done done between now and like the next five years, and I just go from the top to the bottom. I am, I am genuine and compassionate answering anybody's question to the fullest extent that I can. And I try to be open to new ideas. We're, we're, we're an atheist organization going into completely new territory here because the atheist movement, you know, because of the woke infiltration, they didn't want to go into the conservative movement. They didn't want to go into the liberty movement. They didn't want to go into all these other communities. So I always have to be, I, I am kind of alone. If you think about it, I always have to have to, um, I have some experience from, from past figures but this is really um new uncharted territory for us and i just have to always be open to people and be compassionate and humble to others um and just hope that you know the left uh doesn't take me down i think it'll be harder for for the woke left to take me down but uh we'll have to see it's only a matter of time a lot of these things are only a matter of time i say that from from my experience on games to my experience in activism uh to all that time is the real factor in all but I, I, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, like, mm-hmm. obviously somebody that you, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if look up to is the right word, but uh, somebody that you actually helped me get into contact with, David Silverman, also the head of an organization, also got hit hard by allegations that ended up, like, yeah. ruining his career. And for a while, ruining his life. He's still building himself back up from that. I like, saw it firsthand, and it was awful, Sean, seeing someone who I consider to be my hero in activism and how I conducted myself as a professional be tarnished and, and torn down to the most basic human elements like that. It's awful. This is how vicious these people are. And this is why we cannot give one single inch to the woke left when it comes to this. We have to fight back. This is why I, I put on the suit when I get to work. Right. I take my job very seriously because we cannot concede a day an hour, any amount of money or time to these people because they will do whatever they can with any capacity so they, at any capacity to take us down. They're, they're all, they've been trying to take you down, right? We've seen this happen constantly with the, these internet absurdities coming after you and your channel. We've seen this in the atheist movement with me. Extremists left and right don't like me. They still don't like me to this day. I've had experience in dealing with both of those sides. Um, we just have to be vigilant. And we have to fight every single day right. for the values that have made our civilization possible. Uh, and for the record, people who have been trying to take me down, uh, I haven't noticed your efforts, so you need to step it up. Weak stuff. Yeah, um, step it up, guys. Like, <laughs> Get you uh, more of your money. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I mean, I mean, take me down. But yeah, no, if you want to support me, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, uh, once again, Thomas's links are in the description. Definitely follow him on Twitter. He's a really good guy. I've met him in person multiple times, I believe. Thomas told me multiple yeah. times. Um, no, it has been multiple times. Yeah, he's yeah a- it was a, the first time I was at an after party. So maybe yeah. maybe uh, you wouldn't fully remember everything. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I only remembered the people who bought me drinks at that after party. And that was nobody, which hurt. No. Oh. And I think about it. I'll make sure to buy your drink next time I see you. No, no. Because you do a lot of great work here. And I'm I'm a regular viewer of your channel. No, no. You do a lot of great I got I gotta get you a drink because you're a good guy, you're a local guy. And I did meet you and I met a bunch of people that were locals from New York in that first event. So yeah, yeah, we got we gotta hang out. I know it's a pandemic, but we'll 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 deal with it. Just have a bunch of people sneeze on you, that's how herd immunity starts and we'll be fine. Um, oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, <laughs> like uh yeah, no, Thomas is a great guy. I've met him in person. We actually have super chats in the queue that are like, Tom, it was great meeting you at this event or that event. So I think that's a testament to this man's character. And I'm I'm glad that you're one of those like Thank dress you, for the job that you want. Uh, 
like kind of people you know what i mean like you you know you mm-hmm. Cause like you're you're a college kid. I didn't own yeah. a suit in college. It's always good to have a uniform. Yeah, I had to. Uh, I had a job interview. I had to piece together a suit like two days before it. Like you, you're you're got all that prepared, and and I respect that. And I respect the idea that you at such a young age knew the path that you wanted to go through in life. Like I knew I mm-hmm. wanted to be. I knew I wanted to do something like this, like uh, like broadcasting myself and all that. And that's why when I was in school, I decided to take editing instead of uh, like getting a higher like degree in my field, like because I had an option where I could <laughs> fill my electives with uh, I think it was master's classes. I decided I didn't want to do that, yeah. and I took editing, and it was the best decision I ever made. So like having that clarity, especially when you're in college, so you don't have to graduate with something that you don't want and then go back in order to learn something I think is, is very commendable and you have it at a much younger age than I did. And I think that's pretty, pretty impressive. Honestly, I am impressed with you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. And you made, you made the smart educational decision. I'm what I'm hoping to do, cause I'm, I'm pretty much done what my requirements is. I only have one semester left in the spring after all this. Um, I'm planning on taking some business courses. It doesn't even relate to my major, but I know it'll help. No, um, I should have more knowledge of, Things like managing finance, accounting, um, more things in private business management. I've learned a lot about public administration and management, but always try to learn new things every day. Always try to venture out there and, and just find out new things that could make your career and make your life more enjoyable. Oh, yeah, definitely do not take because they'll recommend you take something related to your field. That is incorrect. May, like may, like learn pick yeah. if you're if you're learning something that's a practical skill then use your other classes to learn something that's more like on paper in terms of like that department if you're if you're doing something administrative yeah. then use your 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 elective credits to pick up a practical skill because you never know what you're going to actually end up using once you're like finally have that degree and you're out of college like i've never i i technically did do a little bit of criminal justice work but i would not have been able to do that job unless i learned to edit so i've never had a job past college that wasn't related to video production, right. video editing, or anything like that. So definitely, you know. Good. And you're, you're making a decision that a lot of college students are not making. You're going into stuff that relates to your line of work. Don't devalue yourself. That, and you, you've definitely made sure of that. Your channel is, is amazing. Oh, thank you've done you. a lot of great work. And, and I always tell my friends, well, what's some good anti-SJW or culture war or political content that I can watch to get started? I do recommend your channel. And I'm not saying this just because I'm on it. I do watch your stuff. Um, I, I say to people, you are up and coming. You always try to embrace new ideas. You always try to uh, do new things. You're very funny and entertaining. Um, you have that criminal justice background. So when it comes to, say, debating certain leftists, you do a remarkable job. Um, so you're going in the right direction, and thank you so much for for those compliments. No, I, um, I always I always feel uh, delighted. I, I appreciate I appreciate the kind words. Honestly, like having a background in criminal justice makes it more difficult to debate some of these leftists because they don't even know the origin of certain statistics that they're bringing up. Like, you know, they they go to imright.com right. and they they find the answer that they're looking for and don't progress past that. No, no, I'm left off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, they, well, yeah, it's, it, they're like, <laughs> there's like basic things, like people who think crimes are measured in arrests. That's not true. They're typically measured in reports. It's like, how do you, how do you get past that with somebody who heard uh, somewhere that, oh, the police are making more arrests. That's why there's more crime, even though that's not like, they, like they, they act like that's they not- just figured out the puzzle. Like, they're, like we don't, we haven't spent decades in this country trying to research the best possible ways to gather criminal justice related yeah, like, statistics. Like, like, activists has figured out the problem that many criminal justice majors and, and people in law enforcement and intelligence and political science have been trying to figure out. Amazing. Tell, please tell me more. Yeah. While you tell me how much of a racist I am. Yeah, and they're like, oh, well, there's some unreported crimes. It's like, yeah, yeah, we've we, we've known that since 1972. We've yeah, been collecting obviously. collecting data specifically on that. Like, the, these people think they're reinventing the wheel, so it's hard to have a debate with them when you're like, no, everybody's already mm-hmm. using the wheel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to, to inform you on that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's still quite helpful. Uh, come back when you have something productive to say. Yeah, but I mean, <sighs> you know, it's Dunning Kruger though. They don't know how much they don't know. 
so it's hard to uh yeah to get rid of <laughs> to get rid of that uh i do want to check the super chest for some questions mm -hmm. i i don't know if you have uh anything further you'd like to delve into um, um i'll say one quick thing and i'll also do this at the end um for anyone who wants to support us in our organization, thank you everyone for watching. This has been a lot of fun. Um, if you want to support us in our organization, please go to atheistforliberty.org. And if you really want to help us out, you really want to see our organization prosper and become more relevant with the target groups that we're trying to get into, please consider becoming a member. It's $10 a year, folks, $10 a year, $5 a year for students. And if you can give more, please give more as well. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Your donations are tax deductible. Please support us. You're giving me a job. You're giving me a living. You're giving a lot of our, our great volunteers and board members and activists something really great to accomplish here. Um, and thank you all for, for giving me your support and questions. Yeah. And look, I can speak to Tom's character as a person. He will put your money to good use. I've seen him at a ton of events. He's always, he's always networking. He's always trying to expand his operation. This is a guy who's committed to the cause. Like, I know the term grifter gets thrown around a ton on the internet, Thomas is like the first confirmed. If I'm a grifter. I'm a really good. <laughs> no, Thomas is the first confirmed anti grifter. Everything about his personality is genuine, yeah. and it's, it's 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 again, it's weird for me being a yeah. around thirty, exactly thirty year old man, remembering what I was like at twenty two. Like to look at this twenty two year old man, this full adult at twenty two, uh, with purpose, and. Just, I'm telling you, he's the real deal. He's going to be around for a long time. And he's smart enough to keep himself out of trouble while staying relevant and involved in the issues that he cares about. Um, so, yeah. I do my best. Definitely sign up. I am actually supposed to sign up. I was going to do it before this so we could announce that I'm a member. I will do it <laughs> when we get off this stream. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to sign up to the organization because I do believe in Thomas, and I wouldn't be plugging him on this channel if I didn't believe in him and the organization that he's putting forward. So go to his links in the description if you can. And can't... Here's, here's another thing. I was going to say, go to his links in the description. I'm, and... I'm, I'm, I want to I want to no. uh, Go ahead, Tom. I, it's the lag. It's the Discord lag. Yeah. It's the Discord lag. That's what it is. Um, I just wanted to add, if you become a member of Atheist Liberty as well, please shoot us an email at info at atheistforliberty.org. We'll add you to our private members-only Facebook group and our private members-only Discord server. I'm very, very open to communication. Yes. People who know me from my past know that. Yes. I talk to a lot of people. And again, links are in the description. Uh, it's only 10 bucks a year, half off for students, according to Tom, which I didn't even know. I'm going to have to pretend to be a student. Yeah. And... <laughs> And on top of that, um, <laughs> might need to take some gender studies course. Yeah. Well, on top of that, he has all of his links that you know, like you can follow him and check him out, like his Twitter and like the organization's Twitter and all that. But I do want to jump into super chats before we say our final final goodbyes because I see one. Yes, let's get into the super chats. Yes, let's, I, let's engage. I this is the recent most recent one in. I'll read them in like chronological order next time. But uh, the most recent one sure. says, it's from Whiskey for 10 euros. It says, although making up 13% of the population, I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an exercise. Like, he gives you half of it, and you give the other half. Well, I don't understand. When it comes to, say, religious affiliation? No, no, no. I'll dive a little bit. I, I don't, no, 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 I don't no, no, really no, know no, exactly no, no, what... It's what... Word, word association. It says, although only making... 13% of the population, and then you're supposed to fill in the rest. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to really answer that one. Okay, it, it, he's he's making a, a point about crime, because we were talking about it earlier. Like, although only making 13% oh, of the population, oh. yeah, yeah. like, this number... Okay, gotcha. Actually, that, I didn't know the context there. Yeah. If you want the really nerdy answer, it's... Uh, it's but thank you for giving Sean the super chat. It's yeah. very, that's, a very, that's a very good point. Yeah, but... Um, I think I think the, I'll give you the nerdy answer for that whiskey, which is although representing only 30, 13 percent of the population, black Americans um, on any given year range between 42 and 59, which I think is the highest number I've ever seen percent of the perpetrators of murder in this country. And that varies between the years of like 1976 to 2015 from from like that long chart there so i'll give you the nerdy technical answer for that um i have a super chat from miles kinslow oh miles actually super chatted yesterday and i remember him 
It says, hey guys, Tom, uh, Thomas, it was great meeting you at the Myth and Foreign event. Uh, wish you good luck. Miles is also a great guy, and thank you so much for the super chat. But he said it was great meeting you. Tom. Thank you, Miles. Really appreciate it. Consider sending me an email. We should get in touch more. Um, thank you so much for your support. I love the attendees and organizers of the MythCon event, the Myth Informed, Better Discourse, Minds IRL. Great people. They get some great attendees as well. Let's let's stay in touch. Thank you so much for the super chat. Right. All right. And I have a, a, a super chat from Blake Jameson for five dollars. It says, "Why don't we all just Why don't we all just leave religion and the faith out of public discourse? It's a non-issue. Let Let's all settle on agnosticism publicly and talk real world. So this is <laughs> this is somebody who wants to move. So, so yeah, he brings up some good, interesting points. Um, when it comes to agnosticism, I have a I have a particular view of agnosticism, and I guess this is my more firebrand stance on agnosticism. The problem with saying you're agnostic is that a lot of people really don't understand what you mean when you say the word agnostic. It's been flown out around. Whenever you ask some sensitive person on the street, oh, do you believe in God? Oh, no, I'm an agnostic, so it's like whatever. These people don't believe in God. They are atheists. They might not use the term atheist because they, do, they don't think they're as committed, but yeah. they still really don't believe in God. I'm, I fit the agnostic definition too as well. Um, I totally understand that. It's a good even 50-50, right, to resolve the theist-atheist divide. I, I, I see the good faith in there. But um, the problem is, is most people don't know what agnostic means. Right. Most people just really don't know what I that mean, term is. And it's a sensitive jet term that people put up there, put out there because they, they either just don't know what it is or they don't want to call themselves atheists. Well, and I feel like if people do call themselves atheists more, we'll normalize being godless and being non-religious in society, which is something that is long overdue. Yeah, agnostic is like a, a lazy man's atheist or a weak man's atheist, in my opinion. Um, like atheist is mm -hmm. a lack of belief in God you can't not know if you believe in god either you do or you don't like it's there's no middle yeah. ground position so all agnostics are are in fact atheists because it's either you don't believe yeah. or you do believe um and a lot of atheists are, i know it's seen as an extreme position I think, yeah. yeah a lot of an atheist would be no yeah oh, you're you're totally uh, uh huh agnostic yeah i'm saying atheists are agnostic <laughs> but also it's the discord language yeah Atheists are agnostic, but also a bunch of of religious people are agnostic because they don't know, but they believe. Like so, agnostic yes. is is a very not useful word. So, um, it's not useful at all. It just confuses things. And I get it. A lot of people also don't like it. one of the criticisms about the new atheists or passionate atheists is that we're too strident. We're sometimes mean. I, when I state this, that, that we should call ourselves atheists and non-agnostics, it's not me trying to be a dick. I promise. I think it's just going to be better communication-wise, and I think you're going to be able to get the message out a lot more clearly. And honestly, do some activism on the way as you're right. just simply calling yourself who you are, which I would assume is an atheist. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that I think that's totally fair. I would just say uh, to Blake Jameson, who, thank you again for the super chat. Uh, settle on a secular public yes, anyway. government, not agnostic. Like, we don't know. Like, I get it. Like, mm -hmm. correct thoughts. Totally agree with you. Totally yep. nitpicking. Um, yeah. So, yes. um, I have a super chat from, uh, I don't even know how, something music for four ninety nine, And it says a word that people in my Discord have asked you not to say. Thank you for the four ninety nine, but I will not be reading your super chat. Um... And then I have another one from another person. I'll also, touch up, I'll also touch up quickly on the word agnostic. I'll also say that for people who do call themselves agnostic, we're still reaching out to you. If you go on atheistforliberty.org, you'll see that we have the word agnostic as an identifier for people. You know, We're welcoming a lot of you in. Um, when we premiered at CPAC, we gave away a button that said conservative agnostic. So for a lot of people that call themselves agnostic but are really in – the same camp on the same team, we got you covered. So even if you call yourself an agnostic, please support us and become a member at atheistforliberty.org. Yeah. We're on the same team here. You're you're in the same non-religious realm. Look, if if Devin Tracy, and this is a real thing that can happen, can do an ad for agnostic.com, then you guys can be totally cool with agnostics because you didn't say anything negative about them in comparison to that man. 
Correct. Uh, they are amazing people. Yes. Um, so uh, they're the best. Thank you, Al Vine, whatever Vinny, uh, for that. Um, uh, genuine question. I'm currently an agnostic, and I don't know where to go with religion or my life. What do I do? Uh, I, I I don't know. That's, that's an understandable concern. That's an understandable concern. There are a lot of things about the universe, about human life, about the cosmos that we simply do not understand. And especially as a young person, it's, it's, it, things get very confusing. When politics is ravaging everything, where people get killed in wars, when society is in a big cultural problem right now, um, you sometimes question your existence. And that's normal. That's completely normal. And I understand why a lot of people do take the agnostic position. We really don't know everything in the universe. That, that is a fact. Right. That is a fact. But I call myself an atheist because we don't have sufficient evidence right now to show that a god exists. That doesn't mean that I'm 100% certain and I will, I will target anybody who disagrees with me. No, it's just me being truthful and us being truthful of what we currently know of the universe now. Right. But that's I totally understand where, where she's come from. That's a, that's a healthy position. And thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I would say um, if you don't know where to go with your, like the, you know, not knowing where to go with your life after losing religion, I would say one of the things that you don't have to give up if you leave a religion or you feel like a crisis of faith is that sense of community. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the things that objectively yeah. religious organizations do provide, and they're good at providing that. So, like, you know, like associate if with your If you're a young person, yeah. Yeah, associate with your neighbors. If uh, you're a young person, if you're young, then, you know, clubs and all that on college, uh, you know, you could reach out to online communities, but I know we're in a pandemic, but try to get your in-person communities because that does matter. It does make a difference. Well, I would, I would also say too, when it comes to, I'll advertise two things here. Um, so when it comes to just community, if, if you want to talk to anybody, consider, uh, I'll also put in a, a little nice advertisement for AFL, consider becoming a member of a Atheist for Liberty and email us. We'll add you to our Facebook members group or we'll add you to our Discord server, whatever platforms you might, you might have. And, and you could always talk to one of us. A lot of us have been through the same exact experiences. Secondly, if you want to also get involved with an organization that really dives into helping individuals with personal or psychological issues relating to losing belief in, in God or religion, check out an organization called Recovering From Religion. They, I, I'm friends with the, 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 the head of that organization, Gail Jordan. She's a wonderful woman. Um, they have a sort of support network for people that are leaving religion and leaving faith um, and, and a lot of trained professionals who really know how to get into the nitty gritty of, of human behavior when it comes to this stuff. So either option, I'll let you pick. Um, but thank you so much for the super chat. And I totally get where you're coming from. Very understandable. Uh, Blake, Jam uh, Blake Jameson, uh Super chatted again for five dollars. This is the last one so far. It says, "Can we do a mass two verse stream once a month or two? Uh, oh, once a month to hatch ideas on how to deal with real problems. I'm inclined to believe that the right has no ideas or vision. So, I, you know what? Honestly, this is a debate that has been going that has been going on over the past few years. How are we going to solve this issue of the culture war?" This far left woke culture is getting crazier and crazier, and you're having this far right sort of divine right of kings movement coming in to, to make the pot a little worse. So it's it it is very messy, and and yeah, I don't have every single solution. I know Sean, I bet I can speak for you in saying you don't have every single solution. No, no, that is so we should have these correct. Discussions. I have every single yeah. solution. I will I will give all <laughs> of the solutions in one day. I just have to go up on a mountain, carve them into stone, and then bring them back down. And I will have all the solutions. Oh, of course. Can I be? Can I be the one with the loudspeaker that says, "Hear ye, hear ye"? Yes. The great Sean Rabbit YouTuber. Yeah. He knows what direction human life needs to go yes. into. Follow him. I will. And give him a subscribe to his channel and hit the notification bell and give the video a like. I think that would be the first thing that we would say to anybody that that really wants to hear your wise words. Uh, if, if I'm correct there. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, no, I, obviously I don't have all the answers. I don't think the right has no ideas. I think it's a, that's like a meme from the left really. 
that like oh we mm-hmm. have all the ideas we have like the right never comes up with anything new the left isn't coming up with anything new like <laughs> how many times are mm-hmm. they going to try how many times is a left-wing radical organization going to offer socialism like they they pretend yeah. like they're offering some some new fancy stuff but it's the same nonsense it's the, it's the same nonsense you have socialism and social justice on one end Right. And, and, and what just I'm, I'm stating the stereotype Jesus on the other end. A good example I like to give is that um, we really do need to I'll follow up on this by saying we really do need to have these discussions. If our response, if, if I'm with the walk away guys, good, good, good people, by the way, who are getting harassed by Black Lives Matter activists, mem- people who follow the national organization and the rioting and all that stuff and who are getting harassed on on the uh on the streets being called derogatory names and the best thing that we have to come up with and say in response is uh praise jesus or or you should have some jesus in your life we're in a bit of trouble so we definitely need to have more uh discussions (laughs) in order to really continue the flow of coming up with solutions here right um because yeah we do not have the answers the right does not have all the answers we need to keep this going I think that's good. I have one more chat. It just says Sean spelled wrong. It's S E A N, guys. Come on. Uh, we have to see you miserable debating Vosh and Surf. We don't want you happy. I guess that's their way of saying I enjoyed this conversation, and they want the pain of debating a regressive. So, uh, well, what we should do is, is Sean, we should get a regressive, regressive theist, an uh, SJW theist on the program. Two SJW theists. You'll- be you and me and we'll team up together we'll team up together for individual rights and for free speech and for engaging in in dank edgy memes about religion and we're gonna crush them live on the air live on the air can i do it can i just say i would be happy if you know how they have those awkward pairing debates and for whatever reason they -hmm. can never get two like right-leaning people that actually agree on anything together so it's always like a three-way debate, like two progressives that are like in pretty much total alignment versus like Sargon and some alt-right guy. And it's like, what are we doing? Like you can't find somebody – like Sargon yeah. has a bunch of internet friends that agree with him on a bunch of stuff. You can't get him and up one of his friends. Like, if, mm-hmm. I would be happy to go to war with you, Thomas, and never end up in a situation where I have like – some nutbag that i'm grouped with that i don't know <laughs> that i don't agree with because i'm sure we have disagreements but nothing as fundamental as <laughs> some of the pairings that i've yeah. seen on the internet but yeah I, and i like going to war i like going to war and i like winning wars trench so warfare. if i went to war with you i can assure you that that we would win you, but i mean jank's gonna do trench warfare against us so he's we get win. the victory royale yeah. We'd get all the V-Bucks, we'd get all the money, we'd be the winners in Among Us, we would we would tap into all that potential award right there, and we would harness it, because we'd win. We'd win, we're just that good. Alright, all right. I'm, I'm, I would be happy to do it. Look, I'm gonna wrap, we've been on for an hour and a half, if this goes too long, then people won't watch it, so that's just the modern way of the internet. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> but it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Tom. Uh, everybody, please go to the description of this video. Look over all his links. Follow Tom on Twitter. Follow his YouTube. He's going to start posting videos on there. And if you're interested in his organization... Yeah, I'm getting started on YouTube very soon. Yeah. If you're interested in his organization, if you're interested in him, then go sign up for his organization. It's only 10 bucks a month, half off for a student. I'm sorry, 10 bucks a year half off for a student and you get access to an amazing community that i have gotten access to for free because tom likes me but you will will enjoy it too Special access. yeah Normal. and it's it's wonderful uh tom any closing thoughts i'll give you the last word well i want to say that Sean, thank you so much for having me on uh the channel i'm a big fan of your show i love everything that you're doing and i'm i'm honored to be here um, I'm glad that I was here to promote Atheists for Liberty. Once again, Atheists for Liberty is a 501c3 educational nonprofit organization. We care about sustaining individual rights. We care about preserving knowledge. We care about a separation between religion and government. We're against the woke left, and we're also against theocracy. We are the best of both worlds, and we want to continue the greatness that was in the new atheism. We want to continue that within this current culture war because we need to bring secularism and atheism back into the conversation. We need to do this, folks, and I'm looking forward to doing it with all of you. So please, again, everyone, go to atheistforliberty.org. Sign up for a membership. You know you want to do it. It's really good. 
$10 a year, $5 a year for students. You have to hang out with me on Discord, hang out with the volunteer team. We're going to be going to numerous different events. We're going to be coming out with a lot of new updates and information. For example, we're going to be at the Turning Point USA Student Action Summit that's going to be happening in December in Florida. We need volunteers. We need people to send in applications to work with us. We need people who are willing to go with us to CPAC, who are willing to help us out online, who are willing to help promote our content. We are have just started, and we need help. We need new ideas. We need you. Yes. And so please go check us out at atheistfreeday.org. And again, Sean, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, thank you for being on. And if you want Thomas to invite me to that event, sign up. Uh, yeah, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Atheist for yeah, Liberty. Yeah, no, that's Sean to join us. You get, you, maybe Sean will join us. Maybe we could work on a little something like that. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? All right, but mm -hmm. <laughs> Atheist. Nice idea. Yeah, no, I'd be interested, but we got to talk about that later. But Atheist for Liberty, atheistforliberty.org. Again, sign up. Thomas Sheedy, thank you for joining me. You are fantastic. Uh, till next time, everybody. You got Thanks, something? everyone. That's what I was waiting for. Till next time. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for.